and welcome to module two. So the first one we were talking about sleep and some safe sleep uh, concerns and issues and stuff like that. This time we're going to be talking about caring for the infant. So there's a lot of very unique specific to infants and newborns care that we're going to cover um, from bath time to taking care of the umbilical cord and things like that on a more general basis. So we hope you enjoy it and find it worthwhile and we'll see you on the next module. Okay, now for care and cleaning of the newborn and infant. There's gonna be a few things we're gonna cover. And for this caregiver and nanny course, we expect a lot of people to have experience already. So we're gonna go pretty quickly through this. If you are a new parent or someone who does not have experience with nannies, like we said uh, before, when in doubt, find out. So if you have any questions, definitely reach out to us at the nanny agency or just uh, go Google search or find another peer or pediatrician or somebody like that who has experience and expertise and find out uh, any anything you have questions or doubts about, because this is all pretty important. There's uh, little things that can, you know, 99% of the time go right, but if they do go wrong, it can be serious and have lifelong consequences, or even some of these things can prove to be potentially fatal if you don't catch them soon enough. So this is serious stuff. However, um, most of the times it's, it's pretty natural and everybody's gonna have good experience with this. So we are gonna move pretty quickly through it. So what we're gonna cover today is a little bit about bath time. We're gonna look a little bit more in detail about cleaning the eyes, nose, and ears. We're gonna look at what nail care looks like for the newborns. And then we're gonna follow up and finish up with umbilical cord and circumcision care. So basically just kind of grooming and keeping the baby clean and safe. So when it comes to bath time, you want to avoid using soap. Soap can dry out the baby's skin and it can be an irritant. The babies are newborn to the world and so they don't have uh, the resilience or the immune system to deal with outside chemicals or uh, bacteria and germs. So we are going to want to keep the baby's clean and bathe them about every two to three days infants they're not exposed to a lot of dirt they're mostly swallowed up swallowed swaddled up most of the time <laughs> not swallowed up uh, they're mostly swaddled up and so they stay pretty clean um, but there's going to be a few things we just want to make sure we clean so that we can prevent any dangerous bacteria from forming because there's going to be dirt that gets in the folds of their skins and all their lovely little wrinkles especially in their neck um, underneath their chins from feedings and milk that gets down there or or throw up or spit up that gets in there and then over time what happens is bacteria can grow and it can change and it can evolve so the baby's immune system is strong and getting stronger every day but it can't necessarily handle um, all the different germs that are out there. So if we allowed some sort of dirt or grime to sit on their skin for days, uh, that bacteria could grow and change into something that the baby's immune system is not able to deal with. So that's why we want to kind of clean up and wipe up as we go and then make sure about every two to three days we're giving the baby a thorough cleaning so we can reset their skin and make sure any of those bacteria or any of those germs are being uh, cleaned away before they have a chance to grow into something more dangerous. And uh, one quick thing for bath time before we watch a, a great video on a baby bath is just to make sure you never let the baby's uh, head sink below the water line. So never let water enter into the baby's ears. It's super difficult to get out. And once that water is in there, it can become a breeding ground for dangerous bacteria and then lead to further infections. So that's something that we really want to make sure we're focusing on when it comes to bath time is to never let the baby's ears enter the water. So let's go ahead and watch this video. Away from the drafts. Prepare everything you will need for bathing your baby. This may include towels, face washes, baby bath solution, nappies, clothes, and a wrap to swaddle baby. When filling the bath, turn the cold water tap on first and add hot water to adjust temperature. Test the temperature of the water with the inside of your wrist. If the water is too hot for you, it will be too hot for baby. Place the baby on the towels which are laid out on the bench next to the bath or in the cot. Undress the baby leaving only the nappy on. 
Wrap baby securely in a towel, leaving the head exposed. Pick the baby up while supporting baby's head with one hand and placing the remainder of the body under your arm on the same side of your body. Hold baby over the bath. Clean the eyes with the water using a face washer. Wipe the eye from inside out. Rinse the washer and then repeat the same action on the other eye. Sometimes babies get sticky eyes and this can prevent cross-contamination from one eye to the other. Clean the remainder of the face with a face washer, making sure to wipe the outside of the ear and under the chin. Do not put anything inside your baby's ear. Once you have washed the baby's face, you can proceed to wash their hair. Wet the baby's hair with the washer or your hand and apply a small amount of soap-free bar solution to the baby's head. Lather up by rubbing your hand gently and in circular movements over the baby's head. Rinse baby's head with water by using face washers and towel dry baby's head to ensure the baby stays warm. Unwrap baby and remove nappy. If the nappy is soiled, clean baby's bottom first before putting into the bath. Safely hold the baby by placing your forearm across the back of the baby's neck and placing your hand under the armpit around the shoulder. Pour a small amount of the soap-free bathing solution into the bath and mix into the water with your hand. Your baby is well supported and can now be placed into the bath. Ensure you keep baby's head above the water. Most babies will cry when they initially get into the bath, but once they feel the nice warm water, they will become more relaxed. Gently wash the baby's body with a face washer. It is important to wash under the neck as this is where babies become sweaty and milk may accumulate if the baby has vomited. Wash around the umbilical area, in the creases, under the arms, genital area and buttocks. To wash baby's back and bottom, you'll need to change baby's position by turning them onto their tummy. To do this, hold the baby's same arm with your other free hand and transfer baby from one wrist to the other making sure to keep baby's face above the water level. Turn baby's head slightly to the side so they are not facing into the water. Baby can remain in the bath as long as you are both comfortable and the water temperature remains warm enough for the baby. When you are ready to take baby out of the bath, wrap the baby securely in a towel. Again, your baby may cry when they come out of the bath. Just cuddle your baby to calm them down while in the towel. This may help dry most of their body. Lie baby back down on a blanket or towel on the bench or cot and dry the creases, skin folds, under the neck, palms of hand, elbow creases, groin, behind knees, ankle creases, toes and genital area. Ensure umbilical cord is dry and check around the cord for any signs of infection, such as redness, swelling and discharge. Dress baby. Wrap in a lightweight wrap and place in cot or give to partner to hold or cuddle or well, this can be a good time to do tummy time with your baby. This is done by placing your dominant hand under the baby's neck and head and placing your free hand on the baby's chest supporting the chin and turning baby over onto their tummy, ensuring the head is to one side. Make sure baby is placed on a soft surface, blanket or towel as the baby will be moving their head up and down and that you are watching the baby at all times during this activity. Once you have finished, clean the bath and bench top with the detergent wipes and water. During the bath class, the midwife will discuss other topics with you, such as signs of a well baby, shaken baby syndrome, SIDS, safe sleeping, community resources, and the baby's blue book. Remember, try not to get stressed or worried about bathing your baby. It is a great time for you and your partner to interact with your baby and have fun doing so. Away from the drafts. Okay, so that is a nice thorough video. Just want to make sure everybody's on the same page with what uh, what to expect and how to do things the proper way. So just to kind of follow up on what they said in the video, with the eyes, you want to start from the inside and wipe out. And you want to use clean material for each eye so that you're not transferring anything from one eye to the other. And with all of these areas around the eyes, nose, and ears, what we're going to focus on is not 
putting anything into the eyes. We don't want to bring any outside bacteria into the eyes. We don't want to bring any outside bacteria into the nose or the ears. And with the nose and the ears, it's also important not to go into those with newborns because the skin is so tender and it's easy to make bleed or to do damage. Um, and with infant ears, uh, all those important bits are pretty close to the exterior. So they're, since they're so tiny, so um, we don't want to stick anything into the ears or into the nose. And like we were saying before with uh, like dirty bacteria that can make a baby sick, taking and entering into the nose is a good way to bring outside bacteria into the mucus lining, which their immune system hasn't evolved yet to really uh, take on any complicated or particularly nasty germs. So we want to avoid bringing anything into the nose, the ears, and with the eyes, which is where we want to start before any germs or any other dirt kind of gets knocked loose. Um, so we start with the eyes while all the cleaning materials, the cloths or the wipes or whatever, are, are spick and span clean so that there isn't any other bacteria on them yet. Because the eyes are um, something that can get infected. That's why when babies are born, when they're newborns, they'll, uh, the hospitals or doctors will put those drops in the eyes to make sure none of, no bacteria through the birth canal it gets into the eyes when they finally do open their eyes up because they are a vulnerable way for germs to get into the baby who ha does not have a very well developed immune system yet. So speaking of baby nails, we're not going to watch a video on this. Um, basically, we're just going to go through a few helpful tips. So make sure you have plenty of light and good vision. So if you need glasses like I do at this point in time to see tiny things, go ahead and get your glasses. Um, it's Excellent to do this while the baby is asleep. A lot of times babies won't even wake up if you do it gently because uh, babies can tend to be pretty hard sleepers. You want to wait a few days from birth to do this because the skin hasn't yet separated from the nails. So if they do have sharp nails and it's still so close to the skin, you're better off just covering up with the, the little onesies that have the, the mittens on them or just get some baby mittens and wait until the nail gets harder and separates from the skin naturally. Um, you wanna use whatever makes you comfortable. There's a lot of different stuff out there like files. There's these little electric files that you can use that are like a Dremel. Um, there's clippers, there's scissors. Uh, use whatever you're comfortable with. Just make sure you finish any jagged edges off with an emery board so that they don't scratch their delicate skin and cause uh, sores that can then become infected. And then one thing to know is that ingrown nails are not uncommon in babies, and it's pretty easy to self-correct these. Uh, a real easy way to do this is to just soak the hand or the, the feet uh, in some warm water. So this is something you could do after bath time. But what you want to do is just go in uh, with your own fingernail, something gentle, and just kind of lift the nail out of the bed where it's um, where it's in growing into the skin so you can lift that out once the nail softens up a little bit and usually it'll uh, straighten out on its own but if it is something more serious and the entire toe starts to get red or swollen or something like that uh, call a pediatrician and get that taken care of because with babies infections do occur and with their their young immune systems uh, fevers can get bad quickly and infections can get bad quickly because they're so new to the world. They don't have the immunity built up yet. So it's something that we would want to err on the side of safety with newborns to call the pediatrician, you know, when in doubt, we'll go find out. So now we're going to talk a little bit about umbilical cord and circumcision care. So we're going to go ahead and just start a video that covers this pretty well with the umbilical cord but the main thing is just keep it clean make sure the diaper is not covering it and it should fall off in about seven days like give or take a few days but usually about a week it should fall off but what you're watching for is any kind of discharge from around the wound is something to be concerned about typically it's uh, like 99 percent of the time there's zero issues and you just want to kind of wash it off and pour some water around it you don't need to wipe it because it is a fresh wound, so you don't want to be rough with it. Uh, you just want to make sure to keep an eye on it, make sure you're not irritating it by having the diaper rubbing against it, and you want to just make sure you're uh, washing it off when you give the baby the bath by pouring some water over it and maybe dabbing it with a sponge. So here we go.
and one more thing uh, with the umbilical cord care is there are newborn baby diapers and they have like a little dip in the front for the umbilical cord and the belly button. So make sure you're uh, recommending those or using those. Uh, now regarding circumcisions, so circumcisions, circumcisions require a little bit more care. It is like a, it's a fresh wound that's on the exterior of the baby, but they do tend to heal on their own relatively quickly. Uh, but there's a few things we want to make sure we're doing, and that is not to wipe the circumcision. It is a fresh wound, so wiping it could remove any new skin that's forming and cause the healing time to uh, lengthen, and it could cause an open wound, which would lead to infection. Uh, you want to be aware of any pus or discharge, uh, just like any kind of wound. Watch for any kind of pus or discharge coming from it or any swelling or the area getting red. Um, you also want to keep it clean and to keep it clean, like we said, don't wipe it off. Just wash it off if there is any stool on it and then use Vaseline to cover it up and to avoid sticking to the diaper. And I can also prevent any kind of stool or urine from sitting on it or working its way into it. And then, like we always say, when in doubt, uh, check it out. Call the pa pediatrician if you have any questions. But we're going to finish up this module now with this last video here. It's a pretty good video. Um, after this, there will be a quiz. And like we said before, you're going to need to pass the quiz before you can move on to the next module. But if you have any troubles passing the quiz, definitely reach out to us. We're here to help clear up any confusion and good luck. Once the foreskin is removed, the head of your baby's penis will be red and sore. Until the skin is formed over top, you will need to apply Vaseline to keep it from sticking to the diaper. Each day the site should look pinker and may even have a yellowish film. This is the normal formation of skin. It usually takes about seven to 10 days for the circumcision to heal. Never wipe the site. Always wipe around and apply Vaseline with a tube. If your baby poops on the circumcision, wash off the stool, don't wipe. You will need to perform sponge baths until the circumcision has healed. Call your pediatrician if the circumcision has active bleeding. A little blood on the diaper is normal after the procedure. Drainage persistent redness for days, persistent swelling for days. Also call your pediatrician after the circumcision if the baby has not peed within 12 hours of the procedure. Your baby cries if you touch the area days later. Your baby is acting sick, sleepy, not eating, pale in color, or has a fever. There is no special care needed for the uncircumcised penis. You may give your baby a tub bath after the cord falls off. Do not retract the foreskin. Your child may be much older when the foreskin retracts on its own. Once it retracts, it will need cleaned. The pediatrician will tell you when this can be expected. Once the foreskin is removed, the head of your baby's